off with you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Christmas Carol Countdown. Today we're going to be talking about the 1951 version of A Christmas Carol. I believe the title is just simply Scrooge. It kind of goes by both titles. Either way, it's one of the most famous versions, except I had never heard of it. <laughs> I think I'm kind of behind on some of these because there's a few that I've heard are like the classic Christmas carols that have just never made their way to my screen yet. And I have to say, of the three that Rachel chose, I think this one is my favorite, and I can see why it is a classic. It was really good. For the most part, it was extremely well acted. The child actors were great, and I just, I really liked it. It's probably one of my favorites that I've seen so far. So yes, this is widely considered the best version of Christmas Carol. Uh, by, you know, whoever makes those decisions is why I consider <laughs> the best version. And uh, it's interesting because the actor, Alistair Sims, was a comedic actor. He was a, a, a comedian. And I, I think you can do two things with, with a traditional Scrooge story, with a tr traditional Christmas Carol. You can either kind of have a twinkle in your eye kind of a thing, a sort of an approach, and that can be very successful and I like it. Or you can go all out evil Scrooge and not, because the book doesn't have the twinkle in the eye. That is not accurate to the book. It, it, the book describes him as being a sniveling, evil, like just horrible person. There's no twinkle. and But this definitely does the twinkle in the eye. And I think he does such a good job uh, with kind of uh, it's sort of a sarcastic version. Another one that's sort of the sarcastic take on Scrooge is uh, it's definitely the George C. Scott version. Uh, but this Alistair Sims does a good job with that. And, you know, when you take something to the uh, to a feature film, especially a, sh a book as short and as familiar as Christmas Carol, you kind of have to, I think, expand it a little bit and put your own stamp on it a little bit. I'm not a true a traditionalist that everything has to be exactly like the book. And uh, so I, they do some interesting things in this one, I think. And uh, so what did you think of Alistair Sims as Scrooge? I thought he was really good. And I wasn't sure at the beginning, but he definitely kept growing and growing on me. And I, I really liked him by the end. He's, he was probably, he's probably one of my favorite actors to play Scrooge. He was just yeah. really good. I thought he had a lot yeah. of, I don't know, nuance, maybe you could say. He was just, he played it so well. Yeah, very sincere, very, uh, just uh, just a very, a character that you want to follow and you, you want to like. He was very good. And uh, this version is also just so handsomely produced. The cinematography is gorgeous. The way it uses light and shadow and everything like that is just beautiful. Yeah, I thought that everything looked really good, especially because previously I had been watching other black and white ones with Sarah, mainly the silent ones. They never they never looked good. They were just kind of passable. They were like yeah. a step above a stage play, I guess you could say. They They didn't do a whole lot as far as set design or cinematography and i get it it was the early days of cinema so i get, there are probably not many people doing that at that point but because that's what i had been watching and what i had been associating black and white versions of a christmas carol with this one was kind of a pleasant surprise to see yeah. how well they did that yeah yeah, it really is beautiful. In this version, they spend a lot of time with past. What I really think is interesting is you get to see uh, the little fan, and uh, but she's actually not little. She's actually older than Scrooge in this version. In this version, Scrooge's mother dies in childbirth. His mother says, you know, take to the father, like take care of the baby, take care of Ebenezer, whatever. And uh, and then you see later on. That that fan has the same thing happen to to her. She dies in childbirth, having a nephew Fred, and uh, and Scrooge. She says she says, please take care of of you know the baby, please please Scrooge, and please Ebenezer. And 
he, but he like storms out. And so it's kind of an interesting thing. Like he realizes through the visit of the past that he realizes he did the same thing uh, to Fan that his father had done to him, you know, that to his mother and uh, that he had treated him with the same sort of disdain that his father had treated him. And I thought that was really a, 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 an interesting and lovely sort of way to flesh out his character. Yeah, I, I really liked the backstory and I really liked how they explained why Scrooge treated his nephew like he did because yeah. of his close relationship with his sister who died having his nephew. I thought that was just a really great, I don't know if twist is the right word, but is, had any other versions done that before? Because that's not, that's not something that I was totally familiar with. And it's been so long since I've read the book. So maybe it was from the book. I'm not sure. But I don't, I don't remember this. In the book, Fran is, is younger than Scrooge. So obviously his mom didn't die in childbirth having him, uh, but his father's very bitter and, and whatever. And, and uh, so then this is a different take, but I, I think it, I like it. I think it's good. And they also are a little bit more clear in this version about sort of the Christianity that's a part of the book. They talk about how he is, he's not just ignored like a, a pleasant holiday, but that he has ignored Jesus Christ and his gift and, uh, and then Tiny Tim, it makes it very clear when he talks about ma- hoping that the people will remember who died on the cross. And uh, you're supposed to basically, the, it's, it's a way to sort of show uh, this whole story is about kind of not only in the book, the story is not just about somebody ignoring a pleasant holiday. It's, it's about Scrooge has turned his back on Christ and has turned his back on it's it's very clear and so that's also part of sort of this redemption story is him not all is, is coming back to his coming back to faith not just celebrating christmas and uh, so i like that in this and you get your present and uh, and present tells scrooge the child born in bethlehem he does not live in men's heart one day a year but in all the days you have chosen not to seek him in your heart. Therefore, you shall come with me and seek him in the hearts of men of good will. So they, they are pretty forward about sort of that religious element of the story. Maybe it's because I haven't read the book in so long, but I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about that being such a big part of the story. And... Yeah. Like I said, it's been so long since I read the book. I really, I should have read the book before I started this whole series. But I liked how they did it in this version. They did it in such a way that it didn't feel like they were shoehorning it in. Because most of the time when there's like a religious message in a movie, it always feels like it's kind of being forced into the movie. And it doesn't feel genuine enough but i i thought that they did a really good job of putting it in this movie and making it feel like this is legitimately something that should be part of the story yeah yeah and you see alice at this poor house and what's happened to her and uh and her serving and everything and uh i don't know there's just a lot of just emotional scenes and and I think they, they do have some of that dialogue, like the quote I just read, but I, I think they sort of show the, the religious aspect of the story without it, I don't think, without it being like too preachy, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's just, it's just moving in the end. It just adds this extra sort of layer to the story. And yeah. uh, I mean, if I was going to fault this movie at all, maybe they spent too long in past. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just think it's so beautifully made. It's scary. Like the scares are legit. And I was kind of surprised at how dark it got at a couple of points. It it, it gets really dark. And the sound design, especially like the sound effects for when Marley is coming, that was like really haunting. And I, I really enjoyed how creepy that was. Yes. It's really creepy. And I love the, the, the way that, uh, I don't know, even the way that Marley looked, the way he's kind of translucent for that era. I think it looked pretty good. Yeah special effect. No, they did a great job. Alistair Sims is so strong. I really also like the Cratchits in this. 
I really like Tiny Tim in this. I was He's surprised at how much I like Tiny Tim because I'm I'm kind of picky when it comes to child actors. Like uh -huh. I people like to people give kids a pass because they're cute. And I, it just annoys me when they have an adorable kid in movies and they can't say their lines realistically for anything. But this Tiny Tim was so good. I just, I really yeah. liked all of his kids, but Tiny Tim just, it, maybe it's because I've, it's a kind of a low bar, but I was just blown away by how good Tiny he Tim was. Really was. Good. But I think this almost feels like a Hitchcock film. It's just so well made. It's so well, uh, it's just beautiful to watch. It's emotional. I think it works. And uh, well acted, well, I mean, it's just a, a Academy Award worthy film. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a great holiday classic. Uh, and yeah, it's my favorite, like sort of the traditional versions. But uh, I, I mean, it's hard for me to find, there are, there are like two versions of Christmas Carol I don't like, but for the most part, I, I like on some, I can enjoy watching almost every version. I just love the story of redemption and that there's yeah. no lost causes in this crazy world we live in and that anybody can change and, and, uh, and, I think that's probably one reason why I like this story so much is because I've said for years, I'm just a sucker for redemption stories. I love it yeah. when a bad guy becomes a good guy. It's just, it's just one of my favorite tropes, I guess you could yeah. say. I just, I love it. And this is one of the quintessential versions of that trope. I just, I really like it. Yeah. And also I do love the way that this movie uses carols. It kind of underscores the religious themes, yeah. but also it, it's just really effective in, in, in sort of underscoring the idea of repentance and atonement and, and redemption yeah. and all that. It's really good. Yeah, the music, the music that they had in this movie was just perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, I agree. I think that's going to be all for this episode. Next week, I'm going to be joined by my cousin Shana, and we're going to be talking about different versions as told by different famous cartoon characters. And the first episode of that is going to be My Little Pony. <laughs> Shayna loves My Little Pony, and she'd never seen it before. So we had a lot of fun watching that and talking about it. So you can look forward to that, and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone.